Hello, I'm Gareth Morgan. I'm a visual artist. I also have type 1 diabetes. Along with the marvel of insulin pump therapy, I also take medication for hypertension and elevated cholesterol. I'm 50 years old. I'm not a diabetes professional, but I do make art about my life with type 1 diabetes. I'll say a few things about my experience of living with type 1 diabetes during the arrival of the COVID-19 pandemic. Spending increased time at home and aspects of the psychological impact that this has had on me. I'll say type 1 diabetes and COVID-19 a lot. My art is expressive. I draw and paint how I feel. You can consider expressionism as my mood coming out through my hands. Hopefully you can see my experience of the recent months in the images presented here. I live in London. I have a PhD in cell biology with a research expertise in infectious disease. When I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, for a number of reasons I became interested in non-verbal ways of communicating information about the condition from both a scientific and from a personal perspective. I did this specifically through the medium of drawing. Type 1 diabetes is not the easiest thing to understand, to explain or to manage. But I'm fortunate enough to live with a general medic who works at a large London teaching hospital which has helped no end in the management of my condition. Being diagnosed with type 1 diabetes wasn't quite as traumatic or as difficult as I'd thought it might be. Type 1 diabetes had terrified me. My dad had it and it didn't go too well for him. There are, however, a number of things that come along with type 1 diabetes, such as needing to go to the loo as blood sugars rise and fall, needing a vast array of medicines, needing a supply of fast and slow acting carbohydrate, taking daily exercise, going to the hospital for an annual diabetic review, looking out for infections. There are a number of things in this incomplete list that contribute to a reasonable level of health anxiety. And this was before the arrival of COVID-19. Before the arrival of the COVID-19 pandemic, I was aware of the extensive preparation happening at the hospital where my partner works. As it became apparent how infectious the virus was, I was told in no uncertain terms to stay at home. Not just because I have type 1 diabetes, but because the virus is expletive everywhere. This made sense. After all, we'd just built a home studio for me to work in. However, as a visual artist interested in drawing the human condition and people in places, my source of creativity was put on hold when I stayed at home. With other people throwing themselves into the jaws of a crisis, drawing seemed to have become a bit of a trivial pursuit. Simultaneously, my local environment changed incredibly rapidly. The background noise of aeroplanes, cars, buses, trains, schools disappeared. But the noise of my neighbours, also trapped in their own homes, increased and it became repetitious. Groundhog Day had arrived. My blood sugars increased, which could be put down to stress, but it dawned on me how over the 10 years since I'd been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, a surprisingly large aspect of my control is based on routine and exercise. Not just running or cycling, but simpler things like a walk after lunch to the shops or walking to a football match or visiting a gallery. All forms of moderate exercise and relaxation all gone in an instant. Continuing to take a walk shouldn't be a problem, should it? But remember, there is a dearth of public toilets in the UK, and these were now closed. As were toilets in cafes, bars and pubs, and there was a 50-person queue waiting to get into the supermarket. Could I hold on for that long? It was starting to become a question of, could I go out even if I wanted to, without risk? But what's the worst that can happen? Given my partner now had their own COVID-19 ward, I ventured out to the supermarket, braving the long queue and the risk of infection, 
I need to find everything gone. Not just toilet roll and something for supper, but fruit, bread, orange juice, crisps, the things a person with type 1 diabetes might need in the now fabled jingoism to protect the NHS and to save lives. All gone. Why? Anxiety. Next, I went to collect my repeat prescription for insulin. The chemist had changed its opening hours and was closed for disinfection. I thought of old Mother Hubbard. COVID-19 was rapidly becoming a drag. I was getting increasing health anxiety. I'd always considered myself antisocial. But over the first few days of lockdown, I began to see how important it is to see and talk to people outside of what might be considered organised social activity. What I mean is, the lack of a quick chat on a doorstep, in the street or in a park, a joke, a smile, human interaction, patting a dog, empathy, something to think about, or even to draw. I'd listen to the news all day and check my phone. I'd wonder about what I could draw. Why can't I draw? Is there any need to draw? What did you do today? What did you do yesterday and the day before that? What will you do tomorrow and the day after that? To occupy my time and to try to help, I completed a psychological questionnaire about diabetes and COVID-19. This was a strange experience as I didn't feel particularly worried about the management of my type 1 diabetes or contracting COVID-19. But when I answered the part about signs of stress and anxiety, I saw I was at the end of the scale. This was a whole new experience. Previously, I'd been a sound sleeper, but now I woke up early. 4am early. I started to feel anxious which was in part due to a statin that I've since moved off. The weird thing was, I couldn't identify what was making me anxious, other than I couldn't figure out what was making me anxious. Next, I'd wake up early with clenched teeth and hands, feeling like something unpleasant was sitting on my chest. It became difficult to focus, to think, to read, even to watch TV. My creativity dried up, I could see that I was trapped, caught in a futile cycle. As the number and nature of deaths emerged, we engaged in a discussion about type 1 diabetes and COVID-19 comorbidity. Things were fuzzy, but not getting better. Am I trapped? I read the paper on COVID-19 comorbidities and made a quick video about my thoughts. The big news this week is that type 1 diabetes is bad for you. If you read the paper and put aside age, gender, ethnicity, socio-economic background, BMI, then the underlying message is that having type 1 diabetes might be bad for you. Which, I mean, I'm, I'm as shocked as anybody else, to be honest, because I always thought that it was, it was a good thing. I mean, how else would such a condition be so prevalent in society? It must be linked to positive factors like having a charming smile, a winning personality, uh, ability to time travel, uh, to play the guitar like Jimi Hendrix, or to create world peace. That's actually my list for my fairy godmother. Sorry. Type 1 diabetes, COVID-19, increased anxiety, increased risk of death. The massive problem is, like others, you don't know your risk of death, or as it's euphemistically described, comorbidity of type 1 diabetes, until you've contracted the virus, even if you're undiagnosed. Following advice from my partner, I looked at CBT, and mindfulness, which along with exercise have helped no end. It's not all bad news. Curiously, pre-Covid I was a late sleeper, but now I'm up early each morning, seeing things in a whole new light. I even get William Turner's dawn light paintings. 
My HbA1c has not been massively impacted by being trapped, inactive and stressed. I'm seeing the benefits of regular exercise and I have even got into mindfulness. However, I'm now in self-isolation. My mind is calmer, but it is difficult to stay on top of my blood sugars, which is clearly a concern. I look forward to soon being able to go for a walk in the park every day.